Hello! Today, Frida Delgadillo and me, Tap the Maddox, former students of the Molecular Cell Biology class at UTEP, bring you a brief video to help you understand the in-class activities that you'll need to know for exam one. For our first activity, we're looking at agarose gels. Gel electrophoresis is commonly used for the separation of DNA fragments by size for use in genetic analysis. Here we are first looking at an example of an agarose gel that shows us some DNA fragments that can be used to determine the base pair distances and, in turn, help identify similar genetic structures. We can see that in this gel, in row 3, the separation of the fragments suggests that the tested eukaryotic cells have nucleosomes of 400 base pairs. The separation in row 5 indicates that the nucleosomes of the second eukaryotic cell are 200 base pairs. In this specific in-class activity, however, we are presented with the following scenario. Scientists have discovered five new types of eukaryotic cells on Mars. These findings are explained by stating that the DNA in the organism displays, and then presenting us with five descriptions. The answer choices will be listed by letter in order of the lane in which each particular cell lands. The actual agarose gel from the question is shown here with two of the answer choices. Let's dive right in with option A. The apparent absence of nucleosomes, suggesting that perhaps the DNA is associated to proteins in a non-repetitive pattern that projects only relatively short stretches of DNA. This means we have to look for short segments of DNA, those are the least base pairs, and no significant separation of DNA fragments. With this information, we can see that row 2 is the correct one. Option B, nucleosomes that exhibit the same size as in human cells, but with no evidence for the presence of loosely associated proteins in the linker region. Because a human nucleosome is about 200 base pairs, and because there are no other DNA fragments visible, we can see that row 3 must be the correct option. C, large nucleosomes, 400 base pairs in length, with proteins loosely associated to linker regions. The first row has nucleosomes that are 400 base pairs apart. So this one must be the correct choice. For D, nucleosomes like those in human cells, 200 base pair nucleosomes with proteins loosely associated to linker region. In row five, we see that each nucleosome is 200 base pairs and there are proteins loosely associated to linker region. That's why this one must be the correct answer. And E, huge nucleosomes, 600 base pairs in length with proteins loosely associated to linker region. For this last option, we know that it has to be row four and this can be further confirmed by the nucleosome at 600 base pairs. With each of the alphabetized options organized by the correct row number, we can get our answer of C, A, B, E, D. In the second activity, we're asked the following question. With the presented immature mRNA sequence, indicate the corresponding responses for each of the processed products. And given this mRNA sequence, if we take a look at this sequence, we can see it contains the 5' prime UTR, the coding sequence, 4 introns, and 5 exons. The exons are the ones that you want to keep your eye on here. For this activity, we need to identify if the sequences are A, partially spliced, B, normally spliced, C, alternatively spliced, or D, a splice product that shouldn't exist. Now, when an mRNA sequence is being spliced, the introns, shown as light blue segments, must be removed. Taking a look at this first product, we can see that all of the exons are in the correct order, and all except one of the introns has been removed. Because of this, this product is only partially spliced. The second product has all of the introns removed, so we're good there. But when we look at the exons, something's off. They're still in the correct order, but one of them is missing, exon 4. This means that this product has been alternatively spliced. The third product has all of the introns removed and all of the exons present. This means that it has been spliced normally. This fourth product looks fine at first, right? No introns, all the exons, but look at the order. Exon 4 is located in front of exon 3. This type of product simply should not exist and is therefore labeled as such. The last one, product 5, has no introns and the exons are in the correct order. The only difference here is the removal of exons 2 and 4, making this another alternatively spliced mRNA. In this final activity, we're looking at cyclobutane rings. 
Remember that they are caused by thymine dimers after long-term exposure to UV radiation. Here we can see a DNA sequence as it is exposed to UV radiation. Once the thymine dimers occur, we see the formation of a cyclobutane ring. Now let's take a look at the DNA sequence in question. In the sequence above, how many cyclobutane rings could be formed upon exposure to UV radiation? So we know that cyclobutane rings can occur between two adjacent thymines, a thymine and cytosine, or two cytosines. These are abbreviated as Cs and Ts. In the first DNA strand, we have two Ts and a TC pair. So in the first strand, we have two possible ring formations. In the three prime strand, we have a CT pair, a TC pair, and another CT pair. That brings us to a total of five possible cyclobutane rings that could occur in this DNA sequence.